Welcome to part zero, which is a short introduction in which I briefly discuss what is non-equilibrium statistical mechanics and I explain the approach in the present lecture. And finally, I will show you the, the table of contents and tell you the outline of the course. Okay, so before discussing non-equilibrium statistical mechanics, uh, let's see what are equilibrium thermodynamics and equilibrium statistical mechanics. First of all, equilibrium thermodynamics is a macroscopic theory. This is important. We never talk about molecules or atoms. And this theory places strong constraints on, first of all, properties of equilibrium states and thermodynamic functions. And also uh, it places strong constraints on transition, possible transitions between equilibrium states. For example, here is uh, say a gas contained in a piston cylinder surrounded by a an environment with fixed temperature T. And you move your piston and you start from this equilibrium state and change the system into a different equilibrium state. And in during this process, you could exert work, work, work W from the system. And then it is well known that the work W is upper bounded by the difference in the Helmholtz free energy. And this upper bound is known as the maximum work principle. This is one form of the second law of thermodynamics. Okay, so uh, this is a typical relation we have in equilibrium thermodynamics. This is an exact relation and it's also a quantitative relation. Okay, and uh, okay, so what is equilibrium statistical mechanics? Now we talk about atoms and molecules. This is a microscopic theory. It is a universal framework for determining properties of equilibrium states and thermodynamic function of macroscopic systems based on its microscopic description, microscopic mechanics. And this mechanics can be classical or quantum. For example, you can express the entropy as the log of the number of states, or you can exp express the Helmholtz free energy we talked about here uh, in this formula. So this is a partition function, but okay, this Ej is the energy level of this uh, macroscopic system described in mechanically, okay? Now, uh, so what is non-equilibrium state and plus three processes? Well, first of all, I have to talk about equilibrium state. Equilibrium state is a state in which we have no macroscopically observable changes or no macroscopically observable flows. This is important. In some case, you have a system in which we have no macroscopically observable changes, but non-zero flow. You will see the example below soon. And then what is non-equilibrium state? Well. Non-equilibrium state is any state that is not an equilibrium state. So there are many, many different type of equilib non-equilibrium state. And a non what is non-equilibrium process? Any process that involves non-equilibrium states, uh, it's called a non-equilibrium process. So here are examples. So you start from this equilibrium state and you move piston like we did before. So if you move it very slowly, probably the state is near equilibrium. And if you do it, move it infinitesimally slowly, this is quasi-static limit, then you will have equilibrium in between, but usually uh, this is only near equilibrium. So, I mean, this is not a very precise word, but anyway, it's, it's only near, it can be near equilibrium, or if you do it fast enough, it's, it's just non-equilibrium, okay? Or if you do something more drastic, you have this, and if you remove the wall, and then, and here's vacuum, and if you remove the wall, something, boom, happens and it's very, very non-equilibrium. And after a long run, uh, you again reach uh, equilibrium state. So these are typical thermodynamic processes. And actually here, we talked about this thermodynamic process. And I said that this is equilibrium and this is equilibrium, but of course in between, we can have non-equilibrium state. It can be arbitrarily far from equilibrium state and still thermodynamics is valid. This is of course valid. This is one very important part about one important aspect of thermodynamics. Okay, so uh, this is uh, an example of state with no changes, but with some non-zero flow. So suppose that you have, a, you have some equilibrium state and you place it in between two heat paths, two equilibrium state heat paths with different temperatures. Then of course, heat will hot flow from hot to cold. And suppose that these two heat paths are sufficiently large and their temperatures do not change. Their states essentially do not change. And then after some time, you will get a non-equilibrium steady state, usually abbreviated as 
NESS, NES, in which you have a steady flow of heat energy from hot to cold. Okay. In this case, uh, we have no macroscopically observable changes because it's steady, but we do have non-zero flow. Okay. So this is not an equilibrium state. This is a non-equilibrium state, steady state. So these are typical things that we want to study in non-equilibrium statistical mechanics. Okay, so let me go back to page one and recall that uh, equilibrium statistical mechanics was characterized by like this. Okay. And if you recall this char characterization of equilibrium statistical mechanics, uh, what you would expect for non-equilibrium statistical mechanics is this. It's a universal framework for determining properties of non-equilibrium states and non-equilibrium processes based on, again, atoms and molecules, microscopic mechanics. Okay. And it will be great if we had such a theory, but we still do not have such a general theory. Or probably there can be no such general theory of non-equilibrium statistical mechanics. One reason is that we call that the uh, principle of equal weights, something called this principle of equal weights is the basis of the foundation of equilibrium statistical mechanics. This is a very powerful, principle and everything about equilibrium statistical mechanics come, come from this single single assumption. Okay, But in non-equilibrium world, we do not have anything corresponding to the principle of equal weights. So what you can do basically is to rely on equilibrium statistical mechanics that we know and mechanics. This is what you want to do. Okay, So suppose that we have an equilibrium state like this and you want to remove this wall and you get this uh, non-equilibrium process. Okay, very wild non-equilibrium process, very wild non-equilibrium process. But uh, how do you treat this? Well, okay, so here you have equilibrium. So you know that this state is described by equilibrium statistical mechanics. So you, as you assume that this initial state is described by an equilibrium distribution. In this case, this is a canonical distribution. So uh, this is a probabilistic descript description, that, but you assume that this initial state is given probabilistically uh, based on this canonical distribution. And then you remove the wall. Now your equilibrium statistical mechanics does not apply. You are in very non-equilibrium situation. But now if the system is a classical one, then you have Newton's equation. Okay, you can in principle solve Newton's equation. So here are a bunch of particles, right? There are many, many particles. So, but you can, this, this Newton's equation gives a very much coupled equations for the motions for these particles. So you solve it. And then this solution will describe everything, non-equilibrium process, approach to new equilibrium state and everything, okay? So uh, you can describe uh, the resulting non-equilibrium state by solving this, okay? But uh, first of all, uh, here, here is some remark, but please forget about this for the moment. Uh, so, okay, so th if, okay, this looks reasonable, at least in principle, but of course, you know that Newton's, uh, many body problem is very hard to solve. Uh, in general, you cannot even solve a three body problem. Here you have like 10 to the 23rd, I don't know, uh, particles, and you want to solve couple, the coupled equation. Of course, that is impossible. Even with, even with the strongest, uh, the most powerful computer of the day, uh, this is of course impossible. And also if it was possible to solve this couple of Newton's equation, if you could print out the result, uh, what do you get? What do you? How, how do you find how this non-equilibrium state look like? And there's there's no way of you, we no way will you or us to uh, analyze this solution of mechanical of Newton's equation to to see how this non-equilibrium state behave. Okay, so uh, this is a this is plausible only in principle, and in pre in practice, this is just impossible. So we should give up. Okay, so here comes a remark, very very uh, rem sort of fundamental remark. And actually, if you think about this very, very carefully, there is no, there is a priori, no guarantee that this, this whole approach is allowed. I said that this is in principle plausible, but uh, you can even question this because, because equilibrium statistical mechanics was developed to describe equilibrium states of a, macro of a macroscopic system. Right, and it has been tested. 
many, many, many times in equilibrium situation. But uh, there is no guarantee that it can also be used to describe non-equilibrium state uh, in this way. So that this was a very, very, very detailed remark. And actually, uh, it looks like from many experiments in non-equilibrium statistical mechanics, uh, you don't have to worry about. This approach basically works in, even in, uh, in, in principle, okay? So uh, we, I will never talk about this remark in this lecture. And I will assume that this approach is re reasonable, at least in principle. Okay, so now we can talk about non-equilibrium statistical mechanics, which is not yet complete. So basically what we can use is what we can make use of are equilibrium statistical mechanics and mechanics. And from this, well, you can sometimes make concrete computations, but that's rare. Uh, in many cases, you try to define new useful quantities like entropy production, or this is most common. Uh, you try to, from this, you try to derive some general relations like the reciprocal relation that I talked about, Oh, and linear response and so on. Th these are uh, don't don't be too serious. These are just random lists that I that I yeah made. Okay, and th these kind of things were done sometimes in general setting, but it's very hard. So you do it, it for some restricted setting, like you are very close to equilibrium. Hmm. Okay, so that's a general discussion. So what is the approach in the present lecture? Okay, uh, we we here we make use of equilibrium statistical mechanics and classical mechanics in classical, basically classical system. And we treat this kind of situation. So here, suppose that this blue wall, blue ball is trapped by this kind of potential. You can imagine that this is a plastic bead uh, confined by uh, optical tweezer. And you further assume that there are many small particles like water molecules uh, surrounding this blue. This one is bigger, blue particle. And this uh, red particle hit this uh, blue one quite often. And then uh, blue particle is basically on one of these minima of this potential. It's sort of trapped in this potential minima, but sometimes this red particles collide too often. And then it sometimes climb up this wall and move to a different, uh, minima of this potential local minimum. Okay, so uh, from time so this blue particle basically lives in one of these local minima, but from time to time it jumps to a different local minimum. Okay, and so we want to consider this kind of situation, and uh, and for this transition from one minimum to a different local minimum, we derive a relation called the detail balance condition, which is basically the same thing as the fluctuation theorem that I talked about in the guidance video, okay? So uh, by, de by deriving this detail balance condition, we reach, we arrive at an effective stochastic process that describes the motion of this blue particle. And this is called Markov jump process. And this describes a classical system with almost stable discrete state, in this case, these local minima. Uh, and this system is in touch with larger system heat path, in this case, this uh, the system of water molecules. Okay. So, uh, and as I said before, this, this system may be large, macroscopic or small. Okay. Uh, it applies to both. And for this effective stochastic processes called Markov jump processes, I want to derive some general result for non-equilibrium process and states, okay? And I think I already emphasized this, but this kind of uh, treatment using mathematical simple model is suitable for discussing general results and concept, but it's not very suitable for discussing practice applications, but as I said before, if you learn uh, basic concepts and gen general results, I think it's not very difficult to go to different formulations which are close to uh, practical applications. Okay, so that's basically all, and uh, in the remaining, I like to show you this uh, title video for uh, different parts and basically tell you what I'm going to do in the latter part, uh, in the rest of this lecture. Okay, part one is called foundation. And here you discuss uh, something I was discussing. So here you discuss what we get from mechanics and 
equilibrium statistical mechanics. So we have to review quickly Hamiltonian mechanics, but then you can dis we can discuss the Jartinsky equality and the fluctuation theorem, and then de derive the detailed balance condition that I was talking about here. No, 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 here. Okay, for this kind of transition. So this is a bit, so this is part is co called foundation because we have this and this. So this will be the foundation for the latter part of the lecture. And part two here, this is uh, I I try to do all necessary almost all necessary mathematics abstract theory in this part too. So that means uh, this this part of part two is a bit bit heavy. So I start from probability and entropy. These are easy, and then uh, I'll tell. I, I will develop the basic, uh, the theory, general theory of uh, stochastic processes here. But uh, but I, I'll try to do it in in a, a efficient way. Okay. And here you will finish basically all the abstract theory and now go into non-equilibrium physics. So in part three, I discuss non-equilibrium processes in an equilibrium environment. This means that there is an environment with a with single temperature T or something. And here you have a system which is in non-equilibrium. And uh, for example, we con first consider approach to thermal equilibrium and the fluctuation theorem associated with this. And uh, we also consider operations in an equilibrium environment. So the system is in equilibrium, equilibrium but you do some operation to the system like, like pushing and pulling the piston uh, to make the system non-equilibrium. And here you discuss Jartinsky equality and its relation to the second law. And we consider, we discuss some, this is a rather recent result uh, called the no, no pumping theorem. In part four, now we consider non-equilibrium state and processes in non-equilibrium environments. This means, for example, you have two heat paths with different temperatures. And if the system is in touch with both the heat path, then there is no way of the system to be in an equilibrium state. So this is really, really non-equilibrium world. And here I discuss relaxation to non-equilibrium steady state. And here, these are very important standard result. I discuss linear response relations and reciprocal relations from the modern point of view that we develop. And the problem I said, but the reciprocal relation is the most important result still in non-equilibrium statistical mechanics, but this is an old result. This is an old result, uh, which was de uh, derived by Onsager a long time ago. Okay, and in this part, uh, I'm going to discuss the work that I, I have done with Naoto Shiraishi and Keiji Saito about heat engine. Okay, and I try, uh, I think, I try to discuss it in a, in a compact manner. And finally, part five, uh, this is the theory of Brownian motion. And this is really opposite to the uh, standard textbook. And I first discussed some symmetry, which is basically the fluctuation theorem. And then I derived the Cromer's equation, which is a partial differential equation describing, oops, describing the probability density for the Brownian particle. And from this, I derived a kind of uh, equation of motion called the Langevin equation. Okay. So in many, many textbooks start from the Langevin equation, but here I derive it starting from uh, fluctuation theorem. And finally, I discuss Einstein's theory of Brownian motion. Okay, so that's all for introduction and hopefully see you in part one.